Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Wednesday, August 2nd, and then we'll see how things look for Thursday, August 3rd. We saw a pretty significant down day. The market got spanked. Some say it was Fitch slapped. On a short-term basis, we're turning more negative. We're already there, and we're even showing some oversold indications already. We're showing some overbought and oversold indications at the same time. That's what happens when you kind of lull the market into this sense of security and then things just massively shift in the other direction. We can see our indicators really pick up and move and just come to life very quickly. Where do we go from here? Is support going to hold? Has there been much damage to the longer term trend? I'll try to cover those things in this video. Also, please note that I'm playing around with the thumbnails. Every day this week, I'm trying out a different thumbnail. What I'm thinking of doing is on the community tab over the weekend, putting all the thumbnails that I used up there, and then having you vote if you're interested in that kind of a thing, just to see what you like, what you don't like. I don't really care. I'm more focused on what I say in these videos, but I want to find out what do you find is more appealing. Let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we had a pretty huge gap lower open. And it looked bigger because we've been going sideways a lot. Prices opened down at S3. We don't even get that usually on the chart. That was at 45.42. It continued to drop below S4, which is another thing that never happens. That was at 45.25. I don't even have any capability of calculating S5. Fortunately, we didn't go that low. As the day went on, prices stayed below S4 and the low was found at 45.06 before closing slightly off of the low. We were down 1.38% on below average volume. The technicals, we are now negative in the short term. We're turning more negative in the intermediate term. The long term is still hanging in there for right now. It has to do with interest rates right now. That downgrade from Fitch really kind of spooked the market. It's kind of strange. After the close on Tuesday, the futures really went down, and that had more to do with earnings reports and some reaction to the Fitch thing. But during the night before the market opened, bonds were doing okay. It was after the stock market opened when everything seemed to shift, and that's what they were using as the catalyst to take things lower, when really it's more of a technical thing that needed to happen. They just needed something behind it to make it actually kick into gear. Is that going to continue? Is this more of a one-day wonder? Are we seeing more of a shift now to a longer-term downtrend? Some comments that we can make. Stocks were Fitch slapped as interest rates rose in an overbought environment. Negative seasonality did kick in and Europe was weak. That kind of fed into the cash opening. Mega caps and growth stocks, they led the markets lower. These are the areas that have been doing quite well. Folks wanted to lock in some profits. There was a little bit of selling, then it led to more and more and more and more and more. And we saw these areas that had seen some success suddenly getting dumped in Wednesday's session. Interest rates were lower in the overnight session, but then they spiked as the cash market opened. The positive scenario that we had been dealing with, well, now it's switched to kind of what Fitch said, that there's a concern about future fiscal deterioration growing government debt, and an erosion of governance. Now, you can take that a number of different ways, but this is what they said when they lowered the rating on the U.S. debt. On a short-term basis, our stochastics are giving us overbought and oversold indications at the same time. Intermediate term, the PMO studies, we still have one area there that's overbought. The NASDAQ 100 is no longer extreme with the bullish percent index, but the S&P 500 is. On a long-term basis, our moving average study. Those averages are coming down, but they're still extreme. On a short-term oversold basis, we have the Stoke RSI, the Williams Percent R, the CCI 14, and part of the Stochastics chart, as well as the Force Index. These are our usual culprits. The dollar advanced, and it was up pretty strong, and interest rates were also up. Now, they really spiked up, but then they ended up coming down as the day went on, but stocks just kept going lower and lower throughout the session. All of the yield curves that we follow remain inverted. Sentiment has now dropped. It's in positive land, where it had been 76 at extreme positive. We're now down to 67. Our trend is positive, but it's now declining. We're dropping below the moving average. The green line's going down, but it's still on top. The bias is now negative, and our momentum, I'm keeping it mixed to negative for right now. Economic reports that came out. We had the weekly MBA mortgage applications index. Overall, it was down 3%. 
Purchase applications were down 3%, as were refinance applications. The AD employment change. This is another area that was cited as a catalyst. It came in a lot stronger than expected. They thought it was going to come in at 185000 It came in at 324000 That's suggesting that the job market is still very strong. And this whole idea that the Fed might be done raising interest rates, it throws that whole thing into question. The last time we had this report, it came in at 455000 Keep in mind, we're going to get the employment situation on Friday. Sometimes these two reports really vary from each other. And we'll kind of have to step back and regroup and evaluate what's going on. Looking at some charts, here's the mortgage applications index overall where it is showing a decline. Here's the ADP employment change, which is coming down overall. I only went back one year on this chart because we had that huge gap when the COVID lockdowns happened and it really skews all the results in the chart. Edward Gardeni had some interesting charts where it's showing the economic surprise index. That's the blue line here as of the second, where it is showing that as these economic reports are being released, they're coming in greater or stronger than expected. That's a good thing for a while, but then it becomes too much of a good thing and the market starts to get spooked over it. Also looking at the investor's intelligent bulls bear ratio, where we're up above this three area. Now we could still go higher, but it is starting to get to an extreme positive reading. Some IsabelNet.com blog charts. Now keep in mind that all of these charts were posted before we saw the decline in Wednesday's session. The yellow line is the ISM manufacturing and it's starting to turn up just a little bit here. Comparing that to the year over year change in the S&P 500 and we're just seeing that there's a real wide spread between the two. Is the ISM manufacturing going to improve or is the S&P going to come down? Looking at a time for consolidation, this is the period of time that we're in, August, where they have a little bit different look on their graphs. The average year for the S&P 500 when it gains over 5% in January, and that's what happened, where we tend to see a pretty positive summer, even though it gets a little choppy. Now we have other information that suggests just the opposite, that seasonally we're in a weak period of time. Looking at the equal weight S&P 500, it remains closely and inversely tied to rates. I've actually recreated this chart, and I'll show you this in a little while. I don't like it when they re-index things back to a certain level, but what they're trying to do is show you with the blue line, this is the move index, which measures the volatility of bonds, and comparing it to the equal weight index, which they go back to the beginning of 2022. I don't do any of that stuff, because you can make these things pretty much say whatever you want. What we're trying to do is just show the correlation between the two, and then I have another chart later that I'll show you. Also, looking at the four-week moving average of the active asset managers, that's the red line here, and it's getting pretty extreme positive, also suggesting that we should look at this in a contrary manner, just in case we start to see a follow-through with more of a pullback. Also, looking at the NASDAQ 100 weekly chart, yesterday I showed the S&P 500. Here's the NASDAQ 100. Keep in mind, it does not include Wednesday's results in here. This is just giving you other areas of support or resistance on a longer-term chart. Then we look at the equity allocation. Right now it's at 61%. That's the people that are in stocks. Equity positioning across the different sectors. Folks are in tech, telecom, and even in staples, which still have been holding up okay. Looking at the risk appetite indicator level, where it's coming down just a little bit, it'll probably drop more if we end up having a down week. But still, it's above the zero line and has been increasing. Looking at systematic strategies, this is when you base things on a system. There's no emotion. It could be a computer program that does all the trading for you. It is showing we're leaning more towards being in the market. Are you more or less likely to increase or decrease your equity exposure in the coming days or weeks? It's come down. It was at 31%. Now it's at 28% of folks that think they're going to increase their stock exposure. Getting into our charts and analysis, here's the intraday chart where we just zoom right down to S3. I had to put this on the chart since this isn't part of the indicators that are provided here. Then we quickly came down to S4. We even dropped below that. I have no idea what S5 is. We came right down to the low and then we were able to come up a little bit off of that. Here's the intraday chart, also showing a lot of weakness, where before the market opened, okay, we're doing just fine, doing just fine. And then right before the open, after the ADP employment change report came out, that's when we started to develop some weakness. We carried that over into the cash session, came down to the low, and we're drifting a little bit higher in the initial overnight session. Looking at growth versus value, they both got hit. They were both down on the day. Large cap growth was down more than large cap value, but they all got hit. 
Same thing with the mid caps, but look at the small caps. They were down, but down almost about half as much as small cap value. Looking at the growth to value ratio, it got hit, but saw a little bit of a bounce back as we got into the close, but we were well below the unchanged level. Looking at sentiment, our ulcer index turned up slightly. It's still just looking like it's waking up. The VIX did spike up a bit. We're coming back above the moving average on the line chart as well as the bar chart. The VIX of the VIX, this really picked up. This is showing you, ah, the VIX better do something. And when it starts to do something, this chart really goes up. So we are seeing an increase of volatility of the VIX itself. I haven't showed this in a while, but this was the short-term bearish signal that I've been referring to, where we spiked up at this level and we're coming down. We're still doing that, but this was one of the catalysts that I had been looking at to see, are we going to see some kind of a pullback? This was one of those pieces that I was watching. Looking at the equity put call ratio with the five period moving average, we're continuing to go higher. That could be negative. When this is going up, that usually means stocks are going down. When this is going down, that means stocks are going up. And here's a longer term look at that same chart where we're coming back up above the 0.55 level. But longer term, we're still looking okay. The 253 period simple moving average equity put call ratio continues to decline. And this takes a long time to shift because that's such a long moving average that is used. The VIX to move ratio spiked above its moving average. Both the move index and the VIX took a real hit. Looking at the move index where it did spike up, but it's still below the moving average, where the VIX is now crossed above the moving average, we're seeing them having more of a tendency to go in the same overall direction. This indicator really spiked up, even though longer term we're still in a downtrend, but this really moved up as showing a lot more fear. However, our other fear gauge continues to decline. Looking at the ratio between risk on and risk off, it got hit a little bit, but it's still in an overall uptrend. Advanced decline line, naturally, it came down based on price and volume, but still seems to be holding up. The new highs, we're pretty much flattening out. We're starting to roll over with our five period. We've already been declining with our 10 period. We've been seeing a drop off in the new highs, but you notice here the red, that really didn't shoot to the downside. So we saw more of a contraction of new highs instead of an addition of new lows. The equity put call ratio, it got hit too, but it's still above zero. The accumulation distribution, this is what we've been watching when we dropped below the moving average. This is the smart money. Are they getting ready for things to go lower? It also declined and continues to be below the moving average. The cumulative advanced decline line for the NYSE did drop and it dropped below its moving average. However, the regular advanced decline line is still in an uptrend but did take a tick down. The other NYSE advanced decline line also fell but were well above this upward sloping trend line. The common stock advanced decline line. We did take a little bit of a hit based on price and volume. We're still seeing longer term this negative divergence between price and volume where price had been breaking out, but that was not confirmed by a breakout in volume. Our advanced decline line studies. Yeah, they're all down, but they're still above their moving averages. Looking at our trend, the ADX is now dropping below the moving average. The green line's still on top, even though it's declining. Another day or two of action like this, and we're gonna cross over negative. The ADX is likely to keep falling. It measures the distance between the red and the green line, and when they start getting close, that's when this thing begins to roll over. Our shorter term ADX is showing pretty much the same thing. We're still above 40, and we started to roll over. The green line is on top, but it is declining, and we're seeing a real advance in the red line. Volume still pretty much at about average, nothing all that interesting. Our short term charts, we were just about average with volume. You could even say a little bit below average. We came up to this upward sloping trend line. We hit that a couple of days ago and now we've been falling back. We ended up falling down below this pivot level. So this support level did not hold. And I have another chart to show in just a moment. We did fall further below the 20 period double and triple exponential moving averages. If these continue to roll over, this is short term and that'll suggest that the short term trend is turning negative. Here's another look at the 20 period simple and exponential moving average. So far, this is providing some kind of support. When we really start to go down, this is usually the first level that's hit and we've hit that now. Are we gonna bounce up off of that or are we gonna fall through this? Longer term, here's our rainbow chart, which I don't get to show very much. We've now fallen through the 10 period moving average and we're coming down to the 20. But if you see these lines here, they're still nice and flowing up in the same direction. It's going to take a period of time to start to see this wobbling effect. 
Our moving average steady. We're declining with the 20, 50, and 200, and nothing is extreme anymore. The Stoke RSI, already extreme negative. Just a few days ago, we were extreme positive. Same thing with the Williams percent R. We went from being extreme positive all the way down to being extreme negative in one day. The CCI 14 also has shot down, just barely entering extreme negative territory. Just to give you a comparison, here's the CCI 20 where it is declining, but it's above the dashed line. Here's the weird chart. The stochastics in the short term were already extreme negative. We're declining in the intermediate term. We're turning down in the long term, but we're still extreme positive. The force index has dropped below zero, and we're hitting the lower Keltner band here. That means we've gone down pretty far pretty fast. Intermediate term charts. This is a new one. This is showing seasonality from 2019 to the current time. How has August performed in comparison to the other months? And you can see this typically will be a more negative month. September is the only month that's more negative. I can't change the settings on this chart to go back 5 years, 10 years, 20 years. I can only go back to how these settings come up in the overall chart. Looking at the balance of power, we're right down to the dashed line. So we're at that point between positive and negative. We have fallen below both the double and triple exponential moving averages. This had been providing support. We broke that. That's something to be concerned about. But when we look at our regular 50 period moving average, we're still well above both the simple and exponential moving averages. Looking at our moving average tree, coming down to the 20 period moving averages, still have a ways to go to get to the 50 and all the other moving averages. Looking at the intermediate term rainbow, we're still well above all of these moving averages, going from 50 to 100 periods. Looking at the 20 period simple moving average of the open high low close, when we're in an uptrend, we've fallen back down. We could find some support off of one of these lines. It's happened before. We're seeing if it now will happen again. We'll also be watching to see if price continues to fall or we're going to fall to the underside of this mini rainbow. The go no go system still remains more neutral with a lighter colored blue bar. The highest high reading, we've now dropped below the midpoint. That's a little more negative in the short term. The TTM squeeze, it's falling and it's turning to a darker shade of blue, so it is picking up some of this weakness. We've come down right to just below the midpoint on our standard deviations chart. So we've worked off that extreme positive reading. Now we're wondering, are things going to turn more negative? The Bollinger Bands were also just a little bit below the midpoint right now. The ease of movement after it came down to zero and bounced up off of that, but now we're back down and getting close to zero again. Arun, man, it's just pretty much snoozing these days. It's seeing a decrease in buyers as well as sellers. The overall oscillator was pretty much flat and slightly declined. The S&P 500 McClellan oscillator, it has dropped below zero, so that's more negative. That affects the summation index where we're turning down based on price and we were already turning down based on volume. The NYSE McClellan oscillator has now also dropped below zero. We're seeing a little bit of a rollover based on price and volume for the NYSE summation index. The Swellen Trading Oscillator has now dropped below zero based on price and volume. That's more short to intermediate term negative. The Elder Impulse System has switched to negative with a red bar. The PMO is rolling over after giving us an extreme positive reading. We've already been negative based on price and volume. Our PMO study is declining with the PMOs that are rising. We're declining with the buy signals. We're still extreme positive with the percent of PMOs that are above zero. This is another big one, and this is an indicator I use quite a bit. The parabolic SAR system now has a dot on top. That's an intermediate term switch from positive to negative in the trend. Looking at the slope, we're also rolling over after giving an extreme positive reading. The MACD is also turning more negative. So when we look at all of our oscillators, the short term is turning down, intermediate term is starting to turn down. We're pretty much flat still with our longer term oscillators. The Sean trend meter, after being extreme positive, is now dropping back down. The BPI, this actually held up better than I thought. We haven't really dropped in this. We went down. But we didn't really drop down in a real severe way. This could be taken as positive since it didn't drop down that much. But we are rolling over after giving an extreme positive reading. So that is more negative. The NYSE bullish percent index did tick down. But probably not as much as maybe you thought it would have. The check in money flow. This is what I've been watching lately. This also tries to measure the smart money. We were going down, 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 down below the moving average. Now we've dropped negative with this indicator. The Jacob Oscillator, after trying to come back up to zero, is now turned back down, so that's more negative. 
The money flow is declining, but still above 50. We're looking at the vortex with the green line coming below this one level. That's the line between positive and negative as the red line is now advancing. The ultimate oscillator after trying to get above 50 is now dropped back below 50. That's more intermediate term negative. The RSI, yeah, this really fell off. It's not giving us an extreme reading now. We're wondering if this negative divergence, both in the longer term and even in the shorter term, was starting to play into things, and so far we're seeing that. We've already dropped below 50 with the 9 period, but we're just declining with the 14 period. On balance volume did fall, but is still above an advancing moving average. We saw some turn down in the 200 day simple moving average study and more of a decline in the 50 period moving average study. The Pring bottom fisher, it's just humming along generating a buy signal. I have two charts here. This is a new one. Now, I don't like it when people draw lots of lines on their chart, so I decided to create a brand new chart with some new lines on here. If you draw enough lines on a chart, you can get it to say anything you want it to say, and I try to stay as objective as possible. The first one goes from the October 2022 low, it hits the March 2023 low, and then just keeps going off out into space. That's based on good solid principles. Then, the March 2023 low, I drew a line coming up to the May 2023 low, and then that goes off into outer space. Then, as we were going higher and higher, I drew another one from the May 2023 low up until the July 2023 low, and that goes off into space forever. We were staying above this trend line while we broke down below that. That would be level number one. The next area that we're watching now is around the 4450 level. It'll change because as price is coming down, time will go by and we're not really sure if we'll even hit this or when, but we're just kind of looking at that right now. That would be another support level at about 4450. Our 50 day cycle, hmm, interesting. We had a cycle change on August 1st. Now we're starting to see things start to go down. Maybe there's something to the cycle this time around. Our different charts, turning more negative with the hike in ASHI. This is a little more responsive to price action. We're turning more negative with the Keggy. We have a red line and it's pointing down. Where the Renko, it's like, I don't know, everything's fine. And the three line break, it's also showing a little bit more weakness. Indexes, we did see a decline both with the equal weight index and the S&P 500. And I have another chart to show you here in just a second. The ratio is holding up okay. It did decline overall. But here's the new chart. I decided to take the S&P 500 equal weight and the move index. That's that isabelnet.com blog chart that I was showing you. And I created my own. The blue line is the S&P 500. The red line is the move index, which measures volatility and bonds. And then it's inverted. And you can see they have kind of a tendency to go in the same overall direction. Just to get more insight as to what's happening, I plotted the correlation down below, where a lot of times they have a real strong correlation of going in the same direction at the same time. It's dropped back below zero and we're still in the neutral area right now, but it could be starting to shift. So we're going to see if this chart ends up helping us. The move index, as I keep saying, is pretty new to me. It's only been around a couple of years, and there's not a lot of historical data to really do longer-term studies with this, so I'm still kind of getting the fill of this indicator and index. Looking at Dow theory, we did see a turn down with the Dow as well as the transports. They're still above their breakout levels, and the utilities actually ticked up slightly. The transports, the S&P 500 ratio, yeah, it really didn't show all that much of a change. It's still in an overall uptrend. So we can hang on to this as a positive thing, at least for right now. The transports are starting to outperform the Dow. And this is another new chart. It's the Dow to transports ratio. When this ratio is going up, the Dow is outperforming. When this ratio is going down, the transports are outperforming. The discretionary and equal weight study, we saw an overall decline in the ratio showing that staples outperform discretionary, but longer term discretionary continues to outperform staples. The Dow still above this pivot level. It was down almost a percent, but it really isn't falling off a cliff at least yet. The diamonds still remain neutral. The NASDAQ, this is the area that we've been watching and we dropped below this pivot level. That's more negative. We're also keeping an eye on the 61.8% retracement level. We're not there yet. We didn't even hit it intraday. I'm probably going to extend this line over to see if we actually get down to this level. The low was at 13,915. This line I right now have is at 13,874. This FIB level is just a little bit below where we hit on our intraday low for the NASDAQ. 
The cumulative new highs and new lows, it looked like they were showing some improvement. They're still turning up a little bit, but for a couple of days now, the raw score has been below zero. That's going to affect the overall score of the cumulative new highs minus the new lows. The NASDAQ 100, we're still above the August 2022 high. Yeah, we broke below support. Is this going to hold if we continue to fall? The Qs, though, have switched over to negative with the Elder's Impulse system. The NASDAQ 100 BPI, it's just starting to cross below the 70 level. We're getting a reading of 68. This is an official overbought signal now. This could be more negative long term as we see this start to fall. Is the NASDAQ 100 going to shift over to more of a negative trend? This is also what we've been watching lately with the NASDAQ 100. We were seeing a negative divergence based on price and the PPO. Again, some of this is how it's calculated, but the PPO was still looking more negative. It tried to turn up yesterday, but with the decline that we saw, it's now continuing to decline, suggesting more of a negative trend for the NASDAQ 100. The small caps, they held up okay, but they were still down a percent. They're above these pivot levels. However, when you look at the Russell 2000 index, after coming up to this resistance and then we gave it back, now we're dropping back below it. However, we have generated a recent golden cross. But the MACD is starting to roll over negative and the RSI is still above 50, but it is declining. The small caps have remained at neutral. The small cap to S&P 500 ratio, the small caps actually outperformed because they were down less, but overall they continue to underperform. Small cap growth versus small cap value did take a hit. The mid caps are still hanging out. We lost this one pivot level, but we're still above this pivot level currently. And the mid caps have also switched over to negative. Mid cap growth versus mid cap value did see a decline, but we're still in an overall uptrend. The dollar, seeing a nice little surge here, got above 102 and came right up to its 50-day moving average. The FANG index, after really streaking up higher, now we're coming down and testing the 50-period moving average. Longer term, after setting that all-time high and falling back, we couldn't even get back up to the other all-time high before now falling back down from there. But when you look at the ratio, yeah, it took a hit, but the market is still suggesting that we're going to see a soft landing when you take the S&P and compare it to bonds. Also, a broader measure, the S&P 1500, the shorter-term bonds, also took a hit, but didn't even come down to the 20-period moving average. The broad market with longer-term bonds also took a hit, but still above the blue moving average. The Qs to bonds also took a hit, just coming down a little bit below the blue line. The tech sector to bonds also took a hit, coming down just a little bit below the blue line. Home construction ticked down just a little bit, still above the blue line. And growth versus value, yeah, it took a hit. We're seeing some of our shorter term moving averages start to roll over a little bit. So this could suggest that we're seeing a change or if we start to go back up, we could still recover from that. Keeping an eye on the banks, after gaining above the 200 day moving average, we fell back down below it and closed just under it on Wednesday. The financial sector hasn't generated a golden cross yet, seeing a little bit of weakness. Financials continue to underperform the S&P. The regional banking ETF ticked down when compared to the financial sector and continued to be in an overall downtrend. Looking at bonds, this is where we saw some pretty big movements, but look at the bar, how we really spiked up and then we closed well off of those highs. This is the yield on the 10 year where it looked like we were breaking out above this previous high, but we still closed below that. Based on price, we're below the moving average. We're in danger of seeing a death cross here. The MACD is negative and the RSI continues to be negative. Looking at the growth to value ratio and comparing it to the 10 year yield, they're going in opposite directions right now. Riskier bonds took a little bit of a hit, but folks are still favoring these over the more conservative bonds. This is what we've been watching for quite a while. The uncertainty about interest rates. This ratio continues to go up after it had been falling and this was giving us a cause for concern. We're still above the 2007 level with the three month yield where we just continue to go higher. Our long-term charts, still looking okay with the special K on the daily chart. The weekly chart is still negative. Our longer-term moving averages, we're rolling over with the 150 and 200, and we're just starting to come back down to these lines. Longer-term with the weekly chart of the S&P, we're right on this resistance line right now. Is this going to hold, or are we going to keep falling below that? We're seeing pretty much that same thing with the NASDAQ 100. We're just right on the line right now. The ratio between the NASDAQ 100 and the Dow, it's turning down, but didn't show a big change. 
Other times when we had a really high reading, that suggested some real negativity for the market. We'll have to see if that's going to continue this time. An update of our possible positive scenarios. We saw the Qs underperforming the S&P, discretionary performing the S&P, large cap growth underperformed large cap value. Looking at our growth to value ratios with the large caps, mid caps, and small caps, they all underperformed. The utilities ratio ticked down just a little bit, but it's still going up overall. We're still up here. Believe that, 10-day moving average of the S&P, highs minus the lows, we're still giving an extreme positive reading. Now, if we start to see more follow-through weakness, naturally, this is going to come down. But this also suggests that there's been good momentum behind this move, and maybe we'll be able to get behind it in short order. The 50-period exponential moving average of the new highs minus the new lows continues to advance. We have dropped down with our black line, which is the indicator, which eventually could have an impact on the red line, the moving average. Even with all of this mess, the five-period moving average of the highs minus the lows were still above zero when we look at the broad market. S&P growth versus value, it is still seeing some weakness. Shorter term, we're going down, but longer term, we're still in an uptrend. The Staples to S&P 500 ratio did tick up a little bit, but continues to decline overall. So what's our outlook for Thursday? We do have a lot of earnings reports coming out during the week that will be very influential. This can include Apple, Amazon, Merck, Qualcomm. I understand Qualcomm reported after the close on Wednesday. There's no scheduled Fed speeches for the month of August. The technicals, we're still positive for right now, but we've switched to short-term negative and we're turning more negative in the intermediate term. We're now asking the question, will this last? Is this part of the seasonality that we've been keeping an eye on? Economic reports coming out on Thursday. We'll get the second quarter productivity as well as unit labor costs, the preliminary reading. As we do every week, we'll get the weekly jobless claims. The S&P Global U.S. Services PMI, the final reading, will be coming out. The big one is going to be the ISM Non-Manufacturing Index. And then we'll also get factory orders, keeping an eye on geopolitical events, but right now it's about interest rates. Here's the updated economic calendar for the week. Please note on Thursday, the ISM Non-Manufacturing Index, like I just mentioned, we're getting the big employment report on Friday. Looking at the Stock Traders Almanac statistics for August 3rd, we're neutral to positive with the Dow, neutral to negative with the S&P, and neutral to positive with the NASDAQ. So we're right around that 50% range. When we look at the NASDAQ, we're coming into what we were fearing this chart was telling us. Latter part of July, early part of August, we're seeing some weakness here. We will be on the third trading day of the month. We're following these dashed lines, which are measurements of pre-election years, where we still continue to see some weakness. Going back to 1950, during pre-election years, the S&P's up and down split, 50%. Looking at our scenarios, can't really go too much with the down one right now unless you're more short term because the short term technicals have turned negative and we're turning more negative in the intermediate term. We still ask this question, is this going to last? How long is it going to last? We're asking those same questions with the positive side. We want to see what is price action going to do I personally never try to front run price. I let the charts tell me and then price confirm to see what direction we're actually going in. We're definitely not going with the sideways trend for right now. Our ADX is still showing that we're in a trending environment. The warning signs. Did we see a convergence of these short term bearish signals? Is that starting to play out? Is it going to continue to play out? The longer term trend signals may be signaling a top. Right now, we're right back down to those levels. So, so far, they are holding. We're in a seasonally and historically weak time of the month. The S&P oscillators have switched over negative, and we're keeping a close eye on the NASDAQ 100, which is also negative. The VIX, yeah, it spiked up, but it's still showing that there's not a lot of fear out there. The cumulative new highs, new lows for the NASDAQ are showing weakness. The three-month yield is above and rising where it was at back in 2007. S&P 500 growth is still in an uptrend, but it is weakening. The weekly pivot has acted as overhead resistance. We hit that last week, and we've been coming down pretty much ever since then. The parabolic SAR has turned negative, and earnings season will be on a case-by-case -case basis. The positive signs, way in the background, we have positive seasonality and setups. The special K daily chart continues to be positive. The longer-term equity put-call ratio is positive. 
The S&P is still above that downtrend channel upper line. Now, if we keep just going down, 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 naturally I'll start showing that chart again. We're still in a risk on posture, even though it took a bit of a hit on Wednesday. Lower price levels, are they holding up a support? So far, it looks like they are. Now we have to see, are we going to continue to hold those levels or are we going to go down and test other levels? The S&P is outperforming utilities, the NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100. They're still above that overhead resistance, but they continue to be below the daily resistance. Can that hold? Are we going to start to go down and test some of these support levels? The Staples to S&P 500 ratio is continuing to decline. The Russell index, as well as the small caps and mid caps, have generated recent golden crosses. Small and mid cap growth continues to be positive, and the Pring bottom fisher has generated a recent buy signal. Our conclusion, the S&P, it's turning negative. Will it last? How long is it gonna last? Right now, we are already negative in the short term. Intermediate term is turning more negative, and long term, we still continue to be positive. Be aware of that short-term negative, though. We've already had a number of indications that we're short-term oversold already. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope this is helpful to you, and I will talk to you in the next video.